Hello, and welcome to another presentation of a NAVX extension. The extension presented in this video is commissions. The commissions extension is available for Dynamics 365 Business Central, as well as legacy versions of Microsoft Dynamics NAV back to version 2015. The system incorporates a fully assisted setup to make it very easy for you to get started. Let's take a look. So in Business Central, the first thing I need to do is go into Extension Management and install the published app. So here is the Commissions app, and we'll go ahead and install the extension. And now it's installed. All the active users must log out of the system and log in again to see the navigation changes that have been created. So we'll go ahead and sign out and sign back in. So the first thing that I need to do, because I want to actually set up some commissions, is I have to go into user setup and under user setup I have to add myself as a commission manager and only commission managers can make changes to the rates and see total commission calculations on transactions so I'm going to add my user ID here and we're going to mark that I have godlike commission access And now, do we want to get started with commissions? Click here to run the assisted setup. So I run through the setup, and it's going to first present me with the NAVX software licensing agreement. We're going to accept that. And now, welcome to commission setup. I can define the details of commission calculations for the reps. Let's go. So the first thing I have to choose is when do we calculate commissions? When are they effective? Based on the date an order was entered, based on the date, the order date that I select, normally the same, the shipment date, or the date I post my invoice. We're going to choose invoice date for this presentation. Now, when are commissions payable? Do we wait to get paid? And if we wait to get paid, do we only process on a fully paid invoice so we don't pay when we get a deposit or a partial? What about ex past due invoices? Do we exclude commissions? Do we exclude any customer with any past due or only with past dues based on a certain duration? I'm going to say that we don't wait for cash, that we pay commissions based on an invoice. Notice you can also select to pay commissions as soon as the order is booked. Now we have to choose what do we do to default calculate commissions. Do we base it on sales or do we base it on gross profit? Or do we base it on quantity? We could do a commission that is you know, $2 per case, uh, per unit. And that can be set up for some salespeople on a transaction while also paying normalized commissions. Sometimes people have a warehouse commission or maybe even a broker commission that's per the number of units. A lot of flexibility. We're gonna pay based on sales. Just a note on gross profit. The gross profit, based on your costing method, can be an adjusted gross profit. If you thought the sale was going to yield a certain amount of profit, and afterwards, additional costs from the vendor come in, and the doesn't match the purchase order, or we allocate charges like freight, or an allowance, or a discount, the gross profit, and thereby the commission, will also be adjusted. We'll say that we calculate it based on the sales amount, and minimum gross profit. So if your salespeople are able to manipulate prices, you don't necessarily want them to get a commission if they drop the commit the margin below a certain amount. So they say, yeah, we're not gonna make any profit, but this way I'll get my commission. So what we can do is say minimum gross profit in order to earn a commission. I'm gonna just change this to a zero for now, just for purposes of this example. 
Now we're going to choose the commission posting policy and automatic commission posting will accrue the commission expense and liability up front. We're going to turn that on. I really like that feature because now I can see the real picture of how profitable my company is. When I make a sale, I'll accrue the commission expense so I can see the real profit. And I'll notice that you notice the account button is now illuminated. Let's go in and choose the two new accounts that have been added to the customer posting group. We have a commission liability account and I've created account 23075 as an accrued commission liability. And I'll copy that down to the two lines below. And the commission expense. I've added account 61150. And we're going to go ahead and copy that down to the other customer posting groups. So now I've set up where the posting has to go. So we'll go ahead and choose next. And what do I want to use in terms of calculating commissions? Do I want to set up generic commissions? For example, if there's a salesperson, I don't even have to set up an item-based commission percentage or an item category. If there's a sales rep on a customer, I can say that all salespeople get 3% on an item and I don't have to choose individual specific commissions. I'm going to say oh, I want to use specific commissions for this presentation. And do I want to create zero amount ledger entries? So if there's someone that's not getting commission, like because of a low margin, do I still want to create the commission ledger entry for reporting and possibly updating or managing? Now specify how negative commissions should be handled. I don't want to prevent them. I actually, if there's a credit memo issued, I want to affect the sales rep. And do I want to prevent negative total commissions? No, I'll let it go. Let, I want them to calculate if a, custom, if a sales rep has a whole bunch of credits issued for product, do I want to actually affect their commission or claw back? Now, if I want items, GL accounts, ch item charges, and resources marked as commissionable, I simply set that here, and it will go through and set this up on the respective cards automatically. Otherwise, I can go into each individual card and choose which ones are commissionable and which ones are not. And that's it. So I, to enable the commission system, just click finish. So now I've completed the setups. Let's go take a look at a customer and make sure that they're set up the way that I want them to be from a commission's perspective. For this example, we're gonna use a customer the Canon group. So I'm going to call up Canon and when I bring up the customer record under the customer button on the ribbon I can see the commission menu has been added. There's also a salesperson commission split where I can set up a table of multiple reps that get a percentage or independent commissions on each transaction. So under commissions we can go ahead and I can click new to create a brand new record and by ship to if I want to, or for all ship to's, the salesperson on Canon happens to be Peter Sato. And now I can choose what is this commission based on? A GL account, an item, a resource, or a charge? It's on an inventory item. In the entity subtype, I can choose an item category. Or if I leave it blank, it's just gonna be an individual item in this field. We're gonna choose the bicycle item number 1000. I couldn't put, I can enter effective dates. So if the commission structure changes, I can leave and add new records that will automatically kick in based on the respective commission calculation date that I've previously configured. So I can look over the years and see what's changed. I can enter here minimum amounts and this can be useful in terms of a hockey stick or a curved type commission structure where based on dollar amounts, if I sell more and more, maybe the commission rate goes up. And the commission base amount can be based on a line item, a unit cost, or a price. We want the total extended line amount. I'm not worried about a gross profit percentage, and the commission is either a unit amount or a percentage. 
in the percentage, we're going to say that Peter gets 5% commission on bicycles that we sell. Now I'm going to add another new line. And for Peter, Peter again, but this time I'm going to create an item category as an entity subtype. And we're going to choose here out of my item categories, and these are user defined. We'll say anytime Peter sells a chair, Peter's going to get a commission percent of 10. And we'll go ahead and exit the commission setup. So now we're ready to go. Let's create a sales order. And I'm very happy to report that Peter worked hard and sold a bicycle and some chairs to the Canon Group. So we'll go ahead and I'll start typing in the name and there's the Canon Group. And down on the line items on this order, item 1000, the bicycle, Peter sold two. And if we take a look at that line and we look at the commissions, the system has calculated a $400 commission because Peter gets 5% on item 1000. Now let's go ahead and create another line. And this time I'm just going to type the word chair and the system searches and finds me all of the items that are chairs. And Peter sold five pieces of 1900S. So we'll go ahead and put in five units. And if I take a look at this line and we look at the commissions, I can see that the commissionable amount of this line was $964, and that calculates a 10% commission, 96. If there were other reps, or if I wanted to do an override, I can either create new lines or delete the line and add multiple reps for commissions. And if I had defaulted them on the customer, they would automatically be here. So this order is ready to go. Uh, now, based on your workflow and business rules and how you configure Business Central, this could have to create a PIC document. I could have to send an order confirmation out. I could have to create a warehouse PIC document to go out in the warehouse and use barcode scanning. In this most simple example, I'm just going to post. And when I choose to post, I will ship and invoice this order. So what this is doing is processing the inventory depletion and recording all of the information relating to this transaction. So here is the posted invoice, invoice 103032. And if I look at the actions and I navigate this posted transaction, you'll see there's a posted sales invoice, 17 GL entries, six tax entries, one customer ledger entry, the value entries are the inventory transactions and the commission ledger. So if I take a look at the commission ledger entries, here they are. It's created these two lines. And if I scroll across, I can see that here's my percentages that were used. It's storing the information about the item, the type of commission, if it was a category or a regular item, the sales amount, the cost, the profit, the commission amount, and that the status is currently payable. I can also look at the general ledger, and if I look at the GL entries that were created, I can see that the accrued liability in account 23075 has accrued my commission, um, 23075, this is 9640, and the $400 of the accrued commission expense. And likewise, the commission expense has been recorded.
to account 61150, the first two lines. If I scroll across, there's my debit of 96.40 and 400. And we'll just go back. Now, as a result of processing this commission, I can go ahead and look at the commission reports that are built into the system. As part of this extension, we have a commission register and the commission register stores an archive of each posted transaction and the register that was posted. We have a process commissions function. And if I run the process commission, we can go ahead and what do I want to do? Do I want to create purchase invoices? Do I want to group the invoice lines? And I can group them if I want to by customer posting group, by individual document, or bring them over in detail and create an employee payment journal. So this is where when you configure commissions, if you go into a salesperson, you will indicate if you want them to be linked with a vendor. And if they're linked to a vendor record, it will create the accounts payable purchase invoice for the commission. So the system has built in flexible commission calculations. It supports splits. We can do commissions by sell to or by ship to. We can support different commission rate structures. We have commissions based on campaigns sliding, tiered, or hockey stick type commission calculations, and even sales manager commissions. Sales commissions can be based on gross profit, sales, or quantity based, and the rep can be assigned by the customer, by the ship to, and can be overridden on each transactional element. The rates can be constructed as a default rate for all customers and items by rep, they can be set by customer discount group or price group, item category, item, campaign, or a generic commission for all reps and items. Salesperson can be assigned into groups that can be set up. And when you set those up, the rate can be set at the group level. So if you have special groups of reps, maybe in-house versus outside, you don't have to go into each individual rep to set up your commissions. The rates can be set by individual rep. The commission reports that are built in provide you with an ability to take a look at the report on screen and manage your commissions and put them on hold or take them off hold. And if you have to review something and you can create the commission payable. So the Navex commission engine has been built to make it simple to use, simple to configure, and highly flexible. I hope you enjoyed learning about Navex commissions. If you want to learn more, access our website. Have a great day.